Good evening, and thank you for joining me for another Boring Books for Bedtime. I hope tonight's selection provides all the boredom your busy brain needs to quiet down and let you get some sleep. Before we begin, I'd like to give a special shout out of thanks to some new members of our Patreon family Sinjing, Mia, Patricia, and Tate. Thank you all so much for supporting this podcast. By becoming members of Patreon, you help us remain 100% listener-supported and ad-free for everyone, and it's very much appreciated. And because you're supporting in the month of December, you and everyone else who is a member of Patreon or drops us a one-time tip via buymeacoffee.com will be entered into some drawings at the end of the month the prizes for which I'm keeping a secret, but I think you'll like them. If you're interested in supporting Boring Books for Bedtime and being entered into those giveaways, you'll find links to Patreon and buymeacoffee.com in the show description. Now, let's read and relax. Find a comfortable spot. Adjust your volume. Take a nice deep breath in. Let it out slowly. And off we go. Tonight we return to one of the most popular books read on this podcast, and for which I receive more requests than any other. The Book of Household Management, comprising information for the mistress, housekeeper, Cook, kitchen maid, butler, footman, coachman, valet, upper and under housemaids, ladies maid, maid of all work, laundry maid, nurse and nurse maid, monthly wet and sick nurses, etc., etc. Also, sanitary, medical, and legal memoranda with a history of the origin, properties, and uses of all things connected with home life and comfort, by Mrs. Isabella Beaton, published originally by S.O. Beaton in 24 monthly parts, 1859 to 1861, and first published in a bound edition in 1861. Let's return right where we left off, in the middle of a chapter on soup, learn some recipes, and be entertained with some facts about key ingredients. Let's begin. Cabbage Soup Ingredients 1 large cabbage 3 carrots 2 onions 4 or 5 slices of lean bacon Salt and pepper to taste. Two quarts of medium stock. Mode. Scald the cabbage. Exit it up and drain it. Line the stew pan with the bacon. Put in the cabbage, carrots, and onions. Moisten with skimmings from the stock and simmer very gently till the cabbage is tender. Add the stock. Stew softly for half an hour and carefully skim off every particle of fat. Season and serve. Time, one and one half hour. Average cost, one shilling per quart. Seasonable in winter. Sufficient for eight persons. The cabbage. It is remarkable that although there is no country in the world now more plentifully supplied with fruits and vegetables than Great Britain, yet the greater number of these had no existence in it before the time of Henry VIII. Anderson, writing under the date of 1548, says, The English cultivated scarcely any vegetables before the last two centuries. At the commencement of the reign of Henry VIII, neither salad, nor carrots, nor cabbages, nor radishes, 
nor any other comestibles of a like nature were grown in any part of the kingdom. They came from Holland and Flanders. The original of all the cabbage tribe is the wild plant C. colawort, which is to be found wasting whatever sweetness it may have on many of the cliffs of the south coast of England. In this state it scarcely weighs more than half an ounce, yet in a cultivated state, to what dimensions can it be made to grow? However greatly the whole of the tribe is esteemed among the moderns, by the ancients they were held in yet higher estimation. The Egyptians adored and raised altars to them, and the Greeks and Romans ascribed many of the most exalted virtues to them. Cato affirmed that the cabbage cured all diseases and declared that it was to its use that the Romans were enabled to live in health and without the assistance of physicians for six hundred years. It was introduced by that people into Germany, Gaul, and no doubt Britain, although in this last it may have been suffered to pass into desuetude for some centuries. The whole tribe is in general wholesome and nutritive, and forms a valuable adjunct to animal food. Soup a la Cantatrice An excellent soup, very beneficial for the voice. Ingredients 3 ounces of sago 1 half pint of cream The yolks of 3 eggs 1 lump of sugar and seasoning to taste. One bay leaf, if liked. Two quarts of medium stock. Mode. Having washed the sago in boiling water, let it be gradually added to the nearly boiling stock. Simmer for one half an hour when it should be well dissolved. Beat up the yolks of the eggs. Add to them the boiling cream. Stir these quickly into the soup and serve immediately. Do not let the soup boil or the eggs will curdle. Time, 40 minutes. Average cost, 1 shilling 6 pence per quart. Seasonable all the year. Sufficient for 8 persons. Note, this is a soup the principal ingredients of which, sago and eggs, have always been deemed very beneficial to the chest and throat. In various quantities and in different preparations, these have been partaken of by the principal singers of the day, including the celebrated Swedish nightingale, Jenny Lind, and as they have always avowed, with considerable advantage to the voice in singing. Carrot Soup 1 Ingredients 4 quarts of liquor in which a leg of mutton or beef has been boiled, a few beef bones, 6 large carrots, 2 large onions, 1 turnip, seasoning of salt and pepper to taste, cayenne. Mode Put the liquor, bones, onions, turnip, pepper, and salt into a stewpan, and simmer for three hours. Scrape and cut the carrots thin, strain the soup on them, and stew them till soft enough to pulp through a hair sieve or coarse cloth. Then boil the pulp with the soup, which should be of the consistency of pea soup. Add cayenne, Pulp only the red part of the carrot, and make this soup the day before it is wanted. Time, four and one half hours. Average cost per quart, one and one half pence. Seasonable from October to March. Sufficient for ten persons. Carrot Soup 2 Ingredients 2 pounds of carrots, 3 ounces of butter, seasoning to taste of salt and cayenne, 
2 quarts of stock or gravy soup. Mode. Scrape and cut out all specks from the carrots. Wash and wipe them dry and then reduce them into quarter inch slices. Put the butter into a large stew pan and when it is melted, add two pounds of the sliced carrots and let them stew gently for an hour without browning. Add to them the soup and allow them to simmer till tender, say, for nearly an hour. Press them through a strainer with the soup and add salt and cayenne if required. Boil the whole gently for five minutes. Skim well and serve as hot as possible. Time, one and one quarter hour. Average cost per quart. One shilling, one pence. The carrot. There is a wild carrot which grows in England, but it is white and small and not much esteemed. The garden carrot in general use was introduced in the reign of Queen Elizabeth and was at first so highly esteemed that the ladies wore leaves of it in their headdresses. It is of great value in the culinary art especially for soups and stews. It can be used also for beer instead of malt, and in distillation it yields a large quantity of spirit. The carrot is proportionably valuable, as it has more of the red than the yellow part. There is a large red variety much used by the farmers for coloring butter. As a garden vegetable, it is what is called the orange carrot that is usually cultivated. As a fattening food for cattle, it is excellent, but for man, it is indigestible on account of its fibrous matter. Of 1,000 parts, 95 consist of sugar and three of starch. The accompanying illustration represents a pretty winter ornament obtained by placing a cut from the top of the carrot root in a shallow vessel of water when the young leaves spring forth with a charming freshness and fullness. Celery Soup Ingredients 9 heads of celery 1 teaspoonful of salt Nutmeg to taste 1 lump of sugar one half pint of strong stock, a pint of cream, and two quarts of boiling water. Mode. Cut the celery into small pieces, throw it into the water, seasoned with the nutmeg, salt, and sugar. Boil it till sufficiently tender. Pass it through a sieve, add the stock, and simmer it for half an hour. Now put in the cream, bring it to the boiling point, and serve immediately. Time, one hour. Average cost, one shilling per quart. Seasonable from September to March. Sufficient for ten persons. Note, this soup can be made brown instead of white by omitting the cream and coloring it a little. When celery cannot be procured, half a dram of the seed finely pounded will give a flavor to the soup if put in a quarter of an hour before it is done. A little of the essence of celery will answer the same purpose. Celery. This plant is indigenous to Britain and in its wild state grows by the side of ditches and along some parts of the sea coast. In this state it is called smalak and to some extent is a dangerous narcotic. By cultivation, however, it has been brought to the fine flavor which the garden plant possesses. In the vicinity of Manchester, it is raised to an enormous size. When our natural observation is assisted by the accurate results ascertained by the light of science, how infinitely does it enhance our delight in contemplating the products of nature. To know, for example, 
that the endless variety of color which we see in plants is developed only by the rays of the sun is to know a truism sublime by its very comprehensiveness the cause of the whiteness of celery is nothing more than the want of light in its vegetation and in order that this effect may be produced the plant is almost wholly covered with earth the tops of the leaves alone being suffered to appear above the ground chantilly soup ingredients one quart of young green peas a small bunch of parsley two young onions two quarts of medium stock mode boil the peas till quite tender with the parsley and onions then rub them through a sieve and pour the stock to them do not let it boil after the peas are added or you will spoil the color serve very hot time half an hour average cost one shilling sixpence per quart seasonable from june to the end of august sufficient for eight persons note cold peas pounded in a mortar with a little stock added to them make a very good soup in haste parsley among the greeks in the classic ages a crown of parsley was awarded both in the nemean and isthmian games and the voluptuous anacreon pronounces this beautiful herb the emblem of joy and festivity it has an elegant leaf and is extensively used in the culinary art when it was introduced to britain is not known there are several varieties the plain leaved and the curled leaved celery parsley hamburg parsley and purslane the curled is the best and from the form of its leaf has a beautiful appearance on a dish as a garnish its flavor is to many very agreeable in soups and although to rabbits hares and sheep it is a luxury to parrots it is a poison the celery parsley is used as a celery and the hamburg is cultivated only for its roots which are used as parsnips or carrots to eat with meat the purslane is a native of south america and is not now much in use spanish chestnut soup ingredients three quarter pound of spanish chestnuts one quarter pint of cream seasoning to taste of salt cayenne and mace one quart of stock mode take the outer rind from the chestnuts and put them into a large pan of warm water as soon as this becomes too hot for the fingers to remain in it take out the chestnuts peel them quickly and immerse them in cold water and wipe and weigh them now cover them with good stock and stew them gently for rather more than three quarters of an hour or until they break when touched with a fork then drain pound and rub them through a fine sieve reversed add sufficient stock mace cayenne and salt and stir it often until it boils and put in the cream the stock in which the chestnuts are boiled can be used for the soup when its sweetness is not objected to or it may in part be added to it and the rule is that three quarter pound of chestnuts should be given to each quart of soup time rather more than one hour average cost per quart one shilling sixpence seasonable from october to february sufficient for four persons the chestnut this fruit is said by some to have originally come from sardis in lydia and by others from castanea a city of thessaly from which it takes its name 
By the ancients it was much used as a food, and is still common in France and Italy, to which countries it is by some considered indigenous. In the southern part of the European continent, it is eaten both raw and roasted. The tree was introduced into Britain by the Romans, but it only flourishes in the warmer parts of the island, the fruit rarely arriving at maturity in Scotland. It attains a great age as well as an immense size. As a food, it is the least oily and most farinaceous of all the nuts, and therefore the easiest of digestion. The tree called the horse chestnut is very different, although its fruit very much resembles that of the other. Its nuts, though eaten by horses and some other animals, are unsuitable for human food. Coconut Soup Ingredients 6 ounces of grated coconut 6 ounces of rice flour 1 half a teaspoonful of mace Seasoning to taste of cayenne and salt 1 quarter of a pint of boiling cream 3 quarts of medium stock Mode Take the dark rind from the coconut and grate it down small on a clean grater. Weigh it and allow for each quart of stock two ounces of the coconut. Simmer it gently for one hour in the stock, which should then be strained closely from it and thickened for table. Time, two and one quarter hours. Average cost per quart. One shilling three pence. Seasonable in autumn. Sufficient for ten persons. The coconut. This is the fruit of one of the palms, that which it is questionable if there is any other species of tree marking in itself so abundantly the goodness of providence in making provision for the wants of man. It grows wild in the Indian seas and in the eastern parts of Asia, and thence it has been introduced into every part of the tropical regions. To the natives of those climates, its bark supplies the material for creating their dwellings, its leaves the means of roofing them, and the leaf stalks a kind of gauze for covering their windows or protecting the baby in the cradle. It is also made into lanterns, masks to screen the face from the heat of the sun, baskets, wicker work, and even a kind of paper for writing on. Combs, brooms, torches, ropes, matting, and sailcloth are made of its fibers. With these two, beds are made and cushions stuffed. Oars are supplied by the leaves. Drinking cups, spoons, and other domestic utensils by the shells of the nuts. Milk by its juice, of which also a kind of honey and sugar are prepared. When fermented, it furnishes the means of intoxication, and when the fibers are burned, their ashes supply an alkali for making soap. The buds of the tree bear a striking resemblance to cabbage when boiled, but when they are cropped, the tree dies. In a fresh state, the kernel is eaten raw, and its juice is a most agreeable and refreshing beverage. When the nut is imported to this country, its fruit is, in general, comparatively dry and is considered indigestible. The tree is one of the least productive of the palm tribe. Soup a la Cressy Ingredients 4 carrots 2 sliced onions 1 cut lettuce and chervil 2 ounces butter 1 pint of lentils The crumbs of 2 French rolls Half a teacup full of rice two quarts of medium stock. Mode. 
Put the vegetables with the butter in the stew pan and let them simmer five minutes. Then add the lentils and one pint of the stock and stew gently for half an hour. Now fill it up with the remainder of the stock. Let it boil another hour and put in the crumb of the rolls. When well soaked, rub all through a tammy. Have ready the rice boiled. Pour the soup over this and serve. Time, one and three quarter hours. Average cost, one shilling, two pence per quart. Seasonable all the year, sufficient for eight persons. The lentil. This belongs to the leguminous or pulse kind of vegetables which rank next to the corn plants in their nutritive properties. The lentil is a variety of the bean tribe, but in England is not used as human food, although considered the best of all kinds for pigeons. On the continent, it is cultivated for soups, as well as for other preparations for the table, and among the presents which David received from Shobi, as recounted in the scriptures, were beans, lentils, and parched pulse. Among the Egyptians it was extensively used, and among the Greeks, the Stoics had a maxim which declared that a wise man acts always with reason and prepares his own lentils. Among the Romans it was not much esteemed, and from them the English may have inherited a prejudice against it, on account, it is said, of its rendering men indolent. It takes its name from Lentus, slow, and according to Pliny, produces mildness and moderation of temper. Cucumber Soup, French Recipe Ingredients one large cucumber, a piece of butter the size of a walnut, a little chervil and sorrel cut in large pieces, salt and pepper to taste, the yolks of two eggs, one gill of cream, one quart of medium stock. Mode Pare the cucumber, quarter it and take out the seeds. Cut it in thin slices. Put these on a plate with a little salt to draw the water from them. Drain and put them in your stew pan with the butter. When they are warmed through without being browned, pour the stock on them. Add the sorrel, chervil, and seasoning and boil for 40 minutes. Mix the well-beaten yolks of the eggs with the cream which add at the moment of serving. Time, one hour. Average cost, one shilling, two pence per quart. Seasonable from June to September. Sufficient for four persons. The cucumber. The antiquity of this fruit is very great. In the sacred writings, we find that the people of Israel regretted it while sojourning in the desert. And at the present time, the cucumber and other fruits of its class form a large portion of the food of the Egyptian people. By the Eastern nations generally, as well as by the Greeks and Romans, it was greatly esteemed. Like the melon, it was originally brought from Asia by the Romans, and in the 14th century it was common in England, although in the time of the Wars of the Roses it seems no longer to have been cultivated. It is a cold food and of difficult digestion when eaten raw. As a preserved sweetmeat, however, it is esteemed one of the most agreeable. Egg Soup Ingredients A tablespoonful of flour Four eggs Two small blades of finely pounded mace Two quarts of stock Mode 
Beat up the flour smoothly in a teaspoonful of cold stock and put in the eggs. Throw them into boiling stock, stirring all the time. Simmer for one quarter of an hour. Season and serve with a French roll in the tureen or fried sippets of bread. Time, one half an hour. Average cost, 11 pence per quart. Seasonable all the year. Sufficient for eight persons. Soup a la Flamande, Flemish. Recipe 1. Ingredients. 1 turnip, 1 small carrot, 1 half head of celery, 6 green onions shred very fine, 1 lettuce cut small, chervil, 1 quarter pint of asparagus cut small, 1 quarter pint of peas, 2 ounces butter, the yolks of 4 eggs, 1 half pint of cream, salt to taste, one lump of sugar, two quarts of stock. Mode. Put the vegetables in the butter to stew gently for an hour with a teacupful of stock. Then add the remainder of the stock and simmer for another hour. Now beat the yolks of the eggs well. Mix with the cream previously boiled and strain through a hair sieve. Take the soup off the fire, put the eggs, etc. to it, and keep stirring it well. Bring it to a boil, but do not leave off stirring or the eggs will curdle. Season with salt and add the sugar. Time, 4 hours. Average cost, 1 shilling, 9 pence per quart. Seasonable from May to August. Sufficient for eight persons. Chervil. Although the roots of this plant are poisonous, its leaves are tender and are used in salads. In antiquity, it made a relishing dish when prepared with oil, wine, and gravy. It is a native of various parts of Europe, and the species cultivated in the gardens of Paris has beautifully frizzled leaves. Recipe 2 Ingredients 5 onions 5 heads of celery 10 moderate-sized potatoes 3 ounces of butter 1 half pint of water 1 half pint of cream 2 quarts of stock Mode Slice the onion, celery, and potatoes, and put them with the butter and water into a stew pan, and simmer for one hour. Then fill up the stew pan with stock, and boil gently till the potatoes are done, which will be in about an hour. Rub all through a tammy, and add the cream previously boiled. Do not let it boil after the cream is put in. Time, two and one half hours. Average cost, one shilling, four pence per quart. Seasonable from September to May. Sufficient for eight persons. Note, this soup can be made with water instead of stock. Soup a la Julienne. Ingredients 1 half pint of carrots 1 half pint of turnips 1 quarter pint of onions 2 or 3 leeks 1 half head of celery 1 lettuce A little sorrel and chervil if liked 2 ounces of butter 2 quarts of stock Mode Cut the vegetables into strips of about one and one quarter inch long, and be particular they are all the same size, or some will be hard, whilst the others will be done to a pulp. Cut the lettuce, sorrel, and chervil into larger pieces. Fry the carrots in the butter, and pour the stock boiling to them. 
When this is done, add all the other vegetables and herbs and stew gently for at least an hour. Skim off all the fat. Pour the soup over thin slices of bread, cut round about the size of a shilling, and serve. Time, one and one half hour. Average cost, one shilling three pence per quart. Seasonable all the year. Sufficient for eight persons. Note, in summer, green peas, asparagus tops, French beans, etc. can be added. When the vegetables are very strong, instead of frying them in butter at first, they should be blanched and afterwards simmered in the stock. Sorrel This is one of the spinaceous plants, which take their name from spinach, which is the chief among them. It is little used in English cookery, but a great deal in French, in which it is employed for soups, sauces, and salads. In English meadows it is usually left to grow wild, but in France where it is cultivated, its flavor is greatly improved. Kale Brose, a Scotch Recipe Ingredients Half an ox head or cow heel A teacup full of toasted oatmeal Salt to taste Two handfuls of greens Three quarts of water Mode Make a broth of the ox head or cow heel and boil it till oil floats on the top of the liquor. Then boil the greens shred in it. Put the oatmeal with a little salt into a basin and mix with it quickly a teacup full of the fat broth. It should not run into one doughy mass, but form knots. Stir it into the whole, give one boil, and serve very hot. Time, four hours. Average cost, eight pence per quart. Seasonable all the year, but more suitable in winter. Sufficient for ten persons. Leek Soup 1. Ingredients. A sheep's head. Three quarts of water. Twelve leeks cut small. Pepper and salt to taste. Oatmeal to thicken. Mode. Prepare the head, either by skinning or cleaning the skin very nicely. Split it in two. Take out the brains and put it into boiling water. Add the leeks and seasoning and simmer very gently for four hours. Mix smoothly with cold water as much oatmeal as will make the soup tolerably thick. Pour it into the soup. Continue stirring till the whole is blended and well done, and serve. Time, four and one half hours. Average cost, four pence per quart. Seasonable in winter. Sufficient for ten persons. Leek Soup 2, commonly called Kakaliki. Ingredients A capon or large fowl, sometimes an old cock from which this recipe takes its name is used, which should be trussed as for boiling. Two or three bunches of fine leeks. Five quarts of stock. Pepper and salt to taste. Mode. Well wash the leeks, and if old, scald them in boiling water for a few minutes. Taking off the roots and part of the heads, and cut them into lengths of about an inch. Put the fowl into the stock, with at first one half of the leeks, and allow it to simmer gently. In half an hour add the remaining leeks and then it may simmer for three or four hours longer. It should be carefully skimmed, and can be seasoned to taste. 
In serving, take out the fowl and carve it neatly, placing the pieces in a tureen and pouring over them the soup, which should be very thick of leeks. A puree of leeks, the French would call it. Time, four hours. Average cost, one shilling sixpence per quart. Seasonable in winter. Sufficient for ten persons. Note, without the fowl, the above, which would then be merely called leek soup, is very good and also economical. Kakaliki was largely consumed at the Burns Centenary Festival at the Crystal Palace, Sydenham, in 1859. The Leek As in the case of the cucumber, this vegetable was bewailed by the Israelites in their journey through the desert. It is one of the Aliacious tribe, which consists of the onion, garlic, chive, shallot, and leek. These, as articles of food, are perhaps more widely diffused over the face of the earth than any other genus of edible plants. It is the national badge of the Welsh, and tradition ascribes to St. David its introduction to that part of Britain. The origin of the wearing of the leek on St. David's Day among that people is thus given in Beaton's Dictionary of Universal Information. It probably originated from the custom of Kimortha, or the friendly aid, practiced among farmers. In some districts of South Wales, all the neighbors of a small farmer were wont to appoint a day when they attended to plow his land and the like and at such time it was custom for each to bring his portion of leeks with him for making the broth or soup. Others derive the origin of the custom from the Battle of Cressy. The plant, when grown in Wales and Scotland, is sharper than it is in England, and its flavor is preferred by many to that of the onion in broth. It is very wholesome, and to prevent its tainting the breath, should be well boiled. Macaroni Soup Ingredients 3 ounces of macaroni A piece of butter the size of a walnut Salt to taste 2 quarts of clear stock Mode Throw the macaroni and butter into boiling water with a pinch of salt and simmer for half an hour. When it is tender, drain and cut it into thin rings or lengths and drop it into the boiling stock. Stew gently for 15 minutes and serve grated Parmesan cheese with it. Time, three quarters of an hour. Average cost, one shilling per quart. Seasonable all the year. Sufficient for eight persons. Macaroni. This is the favorite food of Italy, where especially among the Neapolitans, it may be regarded as the staff of life. The crowd of London, says Mr. Forsyth, is a double line in quick motion it is the crowd of business. The crowd of Naples consists in a general tide rolling up and down, and in the middle of this tide a hundred eddies of men. You are stopped by a carpenter's bench. You are lost among shoemaker's stalls, and you dash among the pots of a macaroni stall. This article of food is nothing more than a thick paste, made of the best wheat and flour with a small quantity of water. When it has been well worked, it is put into a hollow cylindrical vessel pierced with holes of the size of a tobacco pipes at the bottom. Through these holes, the mass is forced by a powerful screw bearing on a piece of wood made exactly to fit the inside of the cylinder. Whilst issuing from the holes, 
it is partially baked by a fire placed below the cylinder and is at the same time drawn away and hung over rods placed about the room in order to dry. In a few days, it is fit for use. As it is both wholesome and nutritious, it ought to be much more used by all classes in England than it is. It generally accompanies Parmesan cheese to the tables of the rich, but is also used for thickening soups and making puddings. Meager soup, that is, soup without meat. Ingredients 6 ounces butter 6 onions sliced 4 heads of celery 2 lettuces a small bunch of parsley, two handfuls of spinach, three pieces of bread crust, two blades of mace, salt and pepper to taste, the yolks of two eggs, three teaspoonfuls of vinegar, two quarts of water. Mode. Melt the butter in a stew pan and put in the onions to stew gently for three or four minutes. Then add the celery, spinach, lettuces, and parsley, cut small. Stir the ingredients well for 10 minutes. Now put in the water, bread, seasoning, and mace. Boil gently for one and one half hour, and at the moment of serving, beat in the yolks of the eggs and the vinegar but do not let it boil, or the eggs will curdle. Time, two hours. Average cost, six pence per quart. Seasonable all the year. Sufficient for eight persons. The lettuce. This is one of the acetarious vegetables, which comprise a large class chiefly used as pickles, salads, and other condiments. The lettuce has in all antiquity been distinguished as a kitchen garden plant. It was, without preparation, eaten by the Hebrews with the paschal lamb. The Greeks delighted in it, and the Romans in the time of Domitian had it prepared with eggs and served in the first course at their tables merely to excite their appetites. Its botanical name is Lactuca, so called from the milky juice it exudes when its stalks are cut. It possesses a narcotic virtue, noticed by ancient physicians, and even in our day, a lettuce supper is deemed conducive to repose. Its proper character, however, is that of a cooling summer vegetable, not very nutritive, but serving as a corrective or dilutant of animal food. Milk Soup, a nice dish for children. Ingredients, two quarts of milk, one saltspoonful of salt, one teaspoonful of powdered cinnamon, three teaspoonfuls of pounded sugar or more if liked four thin slices of bread, the yolks of six eggs. Mode. Boil the milk with the salt, cinnamon, and sugar. Lay the bread in a deep dish. Pour over it a little of the milk and keep it hot over a stove without burning. Beat up the yolks of the eggs. Add them to the milk and stir it over the fire till it thickens. Do not let it curdle. Pour it upon the bread and serve. Time, three quarters of an hour. Average cost, eight pence per quart. Seasonable all the year. Sufficient for ten children. And with that soup recipe, I think we'll end this evening's reading from the Book of Household Management by Mrs. Isabella Beaton. I'm tempted to try all these recipes, 
but quartering the amount of time things boil, because four hours for a carrot really seems like a lot. If you'd like to read this marvelous work for yourself, as always, you'll find a link to a free ebook from Project Gutenberg in the show description. If you'd like to suggest a boring book you'd like to hear read, or request more from one we've already started, you can drop me an email via our website, www.boringbookspod.com. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me for this evening's reading. Until our next boring book, good night. <laughs>